Hello and welcome back to another Cracker Pack on the Slyfo channel with another piece of concept art at the end and I've picked my pick of the pack and we're back with another pack of Zendikar Hopefully this one will be easier to open Hopefully I'm not holding out my hopes because I don't think it's going to be Let's try the bottom Apparently the bottoms of these packs are easier to open than the tops which is uh, a little bit boring, but there you go. Um, let's just try and get all of the cards out of this pack. Oh, getting random messages. God, I don't need any of that nonsense. I'm trying to record a video here. People randomly interrupting. So we can start straight off with a culling drone, an Eldrazi drone. For one and a black, it is a 2 2 devoid ingest. It's pretty good. It's not bad at all. Um, yeah, 2 2 for 2. It's a bear. It ingests, so it feeds your processors. Next, we have Seek the Wilds. A sorcery for one and a green. Look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a creature or land card from among them and put it into your hand and the rest on the bottom of the library in any order. Which is pretty good. Not as amazing as it could be, because there are probably better ones for getting lands onto the battlefield to trigger your landfall, but because it can find a land or a creature from the top four, it's pretty good at finding stuff. Next, we have a Coral Helm Guide, a Merfolk Scout Ally, and it's a Piker, it's a 2-1 two, for 2, 1 and a blue. Um, for 4 and a blue, target creature can't be blocked this turn, so that's pretty good. Um, yeah, being a Piker with an ability is always good, uh, being an ally is pretty good, so it's... Yeah, even being a merfolk, not in standard, but in, uh, not in standard or limited anyway, but in later formats, in more expansive formats, um, being a merfolk is pretty good. And then the ability of four and a blue for a target creature can't be blocked is pretty good. We then have Angelic Gift, Enchantment Aura for one and a white. Likes giving us one and something, doesn't it? Wonder what the one and a red will be. Um, yeah, for one and a white, it's an enchantment. It's an aura. So, you enchant the creature, and when this enters the battlefield, you draw a card, and the enchanted creature gains flying. It's fairly straightforward, it's pretty simple, and it's pretty effective. Some good evasion there. Um, yeah. Is this going to be one and a red? It's red. It's three and a red, unfortunately. Belligerent Whiptail. Uh, a worm creature. Worm, not amazingly relevant. Uh, it's a 4-2 with landfall. But instead of the other landfalls we've seen, where a creature gets plus one, plus one, or plus two, plus two, this gets first strike. So it doesn't really need to trigger landfall more than once. Once it's got first strike, it's just got first strike. That's just... yeah. I mean, it's a 4-2, so that means it once it has first strike, it'll be a lot easier for it to just trade up, rather or trade equally, rather than just dying to a, like a piker, like the Coral Helm that we saw. Um, it was Coral Helm, wasn't it? Coral Helm Guide, that's the one. Um, yeah, not amazing, not bad. I suppose it does some of the... Uh, landfall kind of things. Uh, we then have Demon's Grasp. For four and a black, it is a sorcery, and target creature gets minus five, minus five until end of turn. It's not bad. Not amazing, but not bad. 
5 for a minus 5 minus 5, so it can quite often just be a kill spell for things. That's not too bad at all. Um, but yeah, I don't particularly run too much black, so I'm not too sure. We then have a Skyline Cascade, a blue land, into the battlefield tapped is one of the cycle that enters tapped for the uh, Battle for Zendikar set. Um, it can tap for a blue, and when it enters the battlefield, target creature opponent controls doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. So it's not bad, it's not amazing. Um, I can't really remember what the others in this cycle do. But yeah, it's, it's not bad, it detains something down. Not detains, I keep calling it detains, but it isn't. Um, hook masters something down. Doesn't sound as good. Um, and it's just an island that enters tapped. I mean, isn't worded island, but not too bad. Uh, we then have another Drassi Sky Spawner. We got one of these in our last pack, so I'm not going to cover that too much. We then have another one of the Titans and a processor as well. Um, the Ruin processor for 7 colourless. Creature Eldrazi Processor it is a 7 8, and whenever you cast Ruin Processor, you may put a card in opponent control an opponent owns from exile into that player's graveyard, which is the smallest form of the processor rule that I've seen. Um, and if you do, you gain 5 life. So, small version of the rule for a fairly small effect. Um, but it's not, it's not bad. It's pretty good actually. Um, sorry, it's messing around with stuff behind the scenes. Behind the scenes being literally behind my phone, um, which is what I'm recording this with. So, if picture quality is always bad with these videos, then that's what you can blame. It's my poor equipment and poor videoing skills because it's yeah I just don't have anything um, anyway continuing on bone splitter splinter splinters this spell's been out so long and yet it takes so much for me to actually register what it's called which is kind of stupid um, in my part uh, it's a sorcery for a black uh, and the additional cost is to sacrifice a creature, which in a token deck is no big deal. If you have, um, in standard currently, the Bludgeon Raider, I want to say. The one drop black creature that's a 2-1 and whenever it raids it can be brought back from your graveyard to the battlefield. That one. Um, and it, the, the effect of this is destroy target creature. So you trade off your sacrifice creature for a hopefully bigger, nastier creature on their side. This also works well with Eldrazi because you can just sacrifice off a Scion. Um, we then have another landfall card, Marassa Ranger. Um, for three and the green it is a 3-3 three, three human warrior creature with landfall. And again, unlike all of the others, this one instead gets counters, but for a cost. So whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay 3 and a green. If you do, you put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on Murasa Ranger. So he... the first time you do it, you pay 4, because you have the 4 from when you cast him, and he becomes a 5-5. Five, five. That's if you don't want to be casting anything else in your turn, because if you land him turn 4, on turn 5 you drop a land, you will then have one mana left because you've spent the 4 again. Um, yeah, so he's, he's not bad. He's not amazing, but he gets bigger late game, so there you go. We then have... Our first, or that was our first uncommon. Our second uncommon, a Resolute Blademaster. For three red-white, 
He's a human soldier ally with Rally, and he's a 2-2. Two -two. So 5 for a 2-2 two -two seems terrible. The reason he's a 5-drop is because his Rally is all your creatures gain double strike, which is really good. So whenever he or another ally you control enters the battlefield, your entire team double strikes, making them all double in power, and half of that power is first striking phase. So it just gives you massive combat advantage, especially if you have a big board. Which at turn 5 playing red-white allies, you would think you would. Um, next, we have a slab hammer. A 2-drop artifact equipment. And kind of landfall. Or kind of reverse landfall that works interestingly in a landfall deck. Um, whenever an equipped creature attacks, you may return a land you control to its owner's hand. If you do, the creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn, and its equip cost is two. So it's not too expensive as an equipment. Um, two to drop, two to equip, and then it gives a reversed landfall trigger. So if you drop it on something like the Territorial Barnoth we saw before, then you can um, well, it wouldn't really work on Territorial Barnoth, unfortunately. Unless you can drop lands at instant speed, which there are cards that do that, like Swell of Growth and things like that. So if you did have a Swell of Growth, you could use this to swing, bounce the land to your hand, to give it a plus two plus two, then Swell of Growth that gives it a plus two plus two and allows you to play a land from your hand. So you then redrop the land that you just bounced, trigger the landfall to give it another plus two plus two. It could be really good. It could also not be really good because it's you bounce the land at uh, instant speed and you can't play land at instant speed, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, it's it's an interesting one. It's a bit a bit strange, but it could be good. So I think yeah, maybe in the second set there's more spells that drop land at instant speed, in which case it could become better. But for now, it's it's kind of average. We then have ooh, I've been looking forward to opening one of these, and it's in green white. Um. I call this cycle the Charm Land. They've also been called the Tango Land, which I find incredibly annoying. Well, not really annoying, more slightly disappointing. It's an interesting pun, it's an interesting play on words, because it takes two to tango, but I prefer third time's the charm, or third land is the charm in this case. Uh, so this cycle, to actually bring you up to date or in on what the hell I'm going on about is that it's they are two basic land types so this one is a land forest plains so when you fetch for forests you can get this when you fetch for plains you can get this um, it can tap as a forest or a plain for a green or a white and then when it enters the battlefield it enters tapped unless you control two or more basic lands, which is where the whole third land is a charm, it takes two to tango kind of pun names come from. Because you need the two basic lands to make this be as good as a basic land when it hits. Um, so it's interesting. So, I quite like these. They're really good because they are basic land types. And, uh, yeah, I like the name Charmland. It's my preferred favourite. So there you go, that's our rare. We then have a really nice looking full art mountain, actually. Mmm. Look at that. The Explosion River. And then a Knight Ally token. These are the Knight Ally tokens summoned by Gideon, ally of Zendikar, for a zero, which is pretty good. Um, so, pick the pack. 
excluding the token, excluding the land, because I can't really draw a good mountain, excluding the rare, well, I can draw a good mountain, it's just uh, the land drawing is going to be kind of boring. Um, so we've got a nice mix of things. Um, what I think would be really cool to draw, and what uh, I'm immediately going towards, is this guy, Resolute Blade Master. He's probably my pick of the pack because he's just ridiculous for allies. Because as long as he lives, he gives you combat advantage when he lands, and then for every turn he lives after, as long as you're dropping allies, you're getting combat advantage basically every turn. Because your whole team double strikes for the rest of the game pretty much. Especially if you have a Gideon on field that doesn't die, because he just makes knight allies every turn. Which means your whole team will double strike every turn. So yeah, Resolute Blade Master is my pick of the pack. And you will be able to see my alt art just now. In a second, anyway. Because last time I realised that I didn't say thank you for watching and goodbye at the end of my video. Even though, technically after I say it, there will then be the little section where you get to see my alt art of Resolute Blade Master, or on the last one, the Awaken card, um, Clutch of Currents, that's the one. I was thinking Currents something, Current Soup, there you go. Um, but yeah, so thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. And stick around to see my Resolute Blade Master concept art piece, alt art. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.